Um, again, another product that we've had in our portfolio or armory for a while is the uh, bar puller, the power ball bar puller. This item will actually allow you to put into your normal turret on a lathe without a bar feed and can give you the opportunity of pulling bars over the range between 9 and 90 mil. Clamps, drive it on clamp and you can pull it out to the desired length. This machine here, you can program like one third into a spindle. And then it's a page that we develop that helps the operator to transform that program, adding the superimpose or adding operation with the lower third. Okay, because you're, you're very, very popular in the United Kingdom. It's the AS series. Okay. It's been a fantastic machine yes. for the engineering technology yes. group. Is this the next step up from that? Yes. Uh, if you have an AAS, uh, the natural step up would be the AS200L with the sub spindle. Uh, but you still have one third. And this machine here has two thirds. So it's a step uh, between the AAS and the WT on WI, for example. It's right in the middle. It's quite yes. small as well, isn't it? So it's almost like a simulation. You compared the two. You, exactly. did, what you, you did them in, in both different methods. And this, the, the, the heavier duty of machining was the fastest. It was the fastest, yeah. yeah. And was it the most cost effective? Because that's, you know, the cost of the tooling, the cost of everything that goes around it. Because that is how you equate your efficiency in the sense. Yes, yeah. So we looked at the, the, the piece part cost and we compared the um, sort of conventional values that you would see with titanium, the rule of thumb figures, if you like. The advantage of this machine, as you showed before, we can be inside the machine, remove the tool, and uh, we have all the capability from presetable tool holders with all the oil going through. So for the operator, it's really easy to, to manage this machine. Okay, we'll come back to ergonomics because it's all about oil not falling on you, and it didn't fall on the camera, which is absolutely perfect, which is what we want. So we're setting this machine. I'm thinking when I'm buying a machine like this, I've got to be doing millions and millions of parts. Yeah, that is no longer the case. That was true in the past, but today, thanks to all the kinematics, the software TB Deco, and the presetable tool holder, we can run every other day, you can change parts. So quite quick to change parts. Now you're going to give us an example of what happens here, aren't you, Mark? Well, let's they, they say that uh, yeah, Paul Jones has crashed his car again. He, he, needs, he needs a new light. So therefore, obviously, the, the, the robot is actually picking up the part. But if you accidentally, it bumps into you on resistance, it stops. So, you know, th this is where it's very much a collaborative robot because you can start the program again. So as long as you're out of the way, you can start again. So obviously when you go to crash number two the next day. Do you, you remember can... when we first met? What was wrong with my car when we first met? Uh, wing mirror was hanging off. <laughs> <laughs> that was some years ago. Now this is iPad. This is very, very easy to program as well. So, Jeff, I know you've been at LK Metrology for a long time. Tell the viewers at home actually how long you've been here. Well, I've been here for 35 years in June. And before that, I was operating and programming an LK machine for two and a half years. I'm joined by the managing director of Grob UK, Lewis Hill. Welcome, Lewis. How are you doing? Good, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for having us today. It's been a pleasure. The Matsura MX520 five axis machining center, affordable to all and popular around the world. But why do so many companies like here at Ritchie Engineering Solutions go from one of these, an MX520, to a MAM? When a customer looks at that last page of the quote, that's just a financial headache, it's a problem. How is he going to fund it? Has he got to pay a deposit? Has he got to fund a VAT? Has he got to give guarantees? What's his trading looking like over the last 12 months? And what we've been able to do with the, the, the business manager's support is really em embrace what we can do. One of our standard deals is a six month skip, which means the customer gets the machine delivered, installed, commissioned, and then the clock starts ticking. So he has six months to generate any income before he makes his first monthly payment. And when or you take deposit. or deposit, yeah. And when you take something like the NMV, and you've got, uh, I, I think you can get, the, you know, a, quite a few pallets on that, can't you? 
Yeah, 34 pallets standard. Yeah, yeah. so you, ima you imagine you're doing some very, you, you know, prismatic work on that. That could be over £100,000 in six months. Easily. Easily. Uh, Steve, you know, we look at, we've, we've been fortunate enough to, to be in your workshop today looking at some of the, the, the latest technology. And, and I would assume that number one before you sell any machine is looking at their application, as you mentioned, yes. and making sure that the machine is fit for the work that they do. Um, but then also, how do you gauge their return of investment? What kind of return of investments do you look at? Um, and with that in mind, are you seeing kind of um, trends of once they've purchased their first machine, they're, they're quickly moving on to their second and for brand new DNG Mori users? I think this is a very important element and certainly with regard to the launch of the M1 machine, which will be followed um, next year with the, the T1 turning machine is that suddenly we're opening up a brand new type of customer. So we have customers that can come into the, into the brand with DMG Mori, they make their first investment, they start making money, and then suddenly other avenues open up, whether that's into prismatic five-axis machining, whether that's into horizontal machining, multi-axis CNC turning, the list is endless, as you appreciate. So effective. I think that the one good thing the open house is very, very good for um, is showing off FANUC products. And one thing that, that's key, especially in our industry, is how quick technology moves on. So even kind of industry experts will still learn something. Yeah, so I'll be uh, at the open house uh, showing off the RoboPod, showing off what it can do, along with my colleagues as well. Um, and uh, we hope for everyone to come and have a look. You know, get outside, come here to the uh, to Fanuc Open House, see our RoboPod in action, and just really get a feel for it up close and personal. If you didn't get a chance to come and see us at Emo, this is a great opportunity to come and see our newest Delta robot in action, um, and have a look at some of the intelligent robot options which are interfaced with it. The Open House is about the future of automation. Uh, the the Fanuc products, you know, they speak for themselves in, in the number of installations, um, but what we're going to be showing are some of the and machine handling and automation systems that, that are in the market from the very entry level right through to the bespoke custom cells. So our open house event will run from the 1st to the 5th of November, that's Monday to Friday. The Monday and Friday are going to be open day so you can look around our exhibitions, our showroom area and then the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday will be more focused and this area that we're in at the moment is going to be transformed into our main stage so you'll be able to see keynote speeches, Panel discussions, we'll have people such as Tom Boucher, our managing director, we'll have Mike Sykes from Mazak, various members from the MTC on our stage speaking about the future of automation. So the Tuesday we're going to have a much bigger focus on automation and the outlook of UK manufacturing. On the Wednesday we'll be focusing on business training apprenticeships, so we'll have our PTS team, our parts training and service department will be available for you to speak to. And then on the Thursday, we're going to have a focus on Industry 4.0 and IoT. So if you're interested in the future of automation, then this event can't be missed.